Um, hello, this is Pocho, and I'm going to be uh, commentating over my small tour for finals battle against Steve Angel, who's a good friend of mine, and I had battled against him before in SPL, but we didn't have a really clean battle, so I was happy to fight him in the biggest stage once again. So um, I'm going to be packing my, a, a pretty standard send offense uh, I built myself alongside uh, a friend. Um, I'm going to be packing a Banter Echion, then Lumberry Tyranitar with Stealth Rock and Fire Blast for, for these steals and also uh, for me and Yellison who are a sort of a nuisance sometimes for this team. Then I mix a Jirachi with some bulk so I'm able to take on uh, stuff like Gengar and like a Sam. Then uh, Spec Gladius with Sleep Talk and Dragon Pulse so I'm able to and to can check Brawloom and Spore users like a Mongoose fully especially offensive Rotom so I have an answer for Rain and then a Scarf Landers since I needed some speed so looking at his team um, I noticed that he has double weathers which is which which is a little weird here in black and white but it, it looks cool mm, he's most definitely packing spikes on the on the Skarmory and probably a stealth rock on either uh, Celebi or Tyranitar, but it's looking more like Tyranitar and then a nasty pass Celebi to Scarf Kilt. So I decided that my best lead here would be Tyranitar, definitely, because even if he led with either either Politop or like Kelio, I had two safe switchings into them, which were my Rotom Wars and my Larios, and I, I still have a, a great position. So let's get it started. So he leads with Larios and I'll lead with, with Tyranitar. First first thing that came into mind when I saw this lead Larios is that this Tyranitar could have I mean this Larios could have a, a flamer with trick. So I needed I knew that Celebi could be a problem in, long, in the long term. So I decided to go into my run here scouting for what he's he was going to do. And I eat a T wave. As you know, in Gen 5, electric types can get paralyzed. So I, he then shows me that he doesn't have leftovers. So I was thinking that he could have Cold War. By the way, he he directly went for T wave. So I stayed in thinking that he wasn't going to do that much damage into to my Rotom and I could bolt it freely. So and he reveals that he's life orb, which was a big surprise to me. Then I come back into my teeter and I click I could pursuit revealing also my long berry, which wasn't going to be that useful. Then he keeps on T waving me and I went for I went for my rocks. Here in this turn I get paralyzed but I was going to go in for crunch I didn't have any reason not to but I get paralyzed so I guess this was kind of 50-50 he kept he kept on Druskin and then I crunch and kill the Larias then he goes into Kelio and as I haven't as I have shown that I don't have Chapel Perry he can easily go for the secret sword here and try to kill my teeter but I wasn't going to allow that and I went into my safest switch with words which was Larios, and I take it pretty well. This damage led, led me to believe so that he wasn't specs or, or any sort of even like wise glasses. He was most likely Scarf. So here, um, I go I go into my into my Jirachi, knowing that he could either go into my into Tyranitar here or staying with Kelio. Either of those options were fine to me because Jirachi unless I get a crit a it, it's a secret sword and I can energy ball back in any case. Um we can this Kelio is was really important to me because that means that Landers and Terrakin could put lots of work as and he doesn't have checks for them. Then he go he ends up going into Polito and I go for my energy ball try to try and scout his set. 
he revealed that he was some kind of book set with special attack. He was definitely modest by that damage. So in order to get him in range of another energy for an, for an Iron Head, but he reveals that he has a Citrus Berry, which was very surprising, but also I guess that works against threats such as Oleka Sam and Gengar. So I discuss, I go again for, for Iron Head as I don't see any value again for this for this Jirachi. And I don't get the flinch on the Unluckily. So, next hit. And I go into tracking here and I click Rock Slide and kill the Polito. He lets it die. Now he goes into his Keldeo and he was he was certainly going to go into uh, Surf or maybe Scald if he had it. I thought he was going to be Surf. But he ended up being Scott, which is okay. I guess you have the burn chance, which is broken. So my Rodom gets a kind of a high roll here. He could have survived it too if I got two mine mine rolls, but it's whatever, I guess. So this is the part where I have to start playing carefully because if I play recklessly here, like safely. I, I may end up swept by this Scarf Kelly, so I have to pull lots of doubles here. So, I break him here to go into his Terminator here, and I double back into Turakian, I guess. Now into my own Cheetah, and then... Um, I go back into La into Landorus scouting for a Super Power. But he goes into his Scarf, so... I go back into Cheetah, I hit here and threatening with with a fire blast so i pull a double here into my teraki knowing that he was most certainly going to teeter trying to get the free rocks but I, I wasn't going to allow him because that means that keldo could most likely sweep me so i go into teeter here and here i have here my place is just done it's 100 even if he stayed in that means that he lost his only way to, to kill my Larios. So I knew I had to stun it here 100% and try to catch even the Celebi or maybe the, the Skarm. So I stun it here and I catch the Celebi and it does a shit ton. But um, I was a little I was a little afraid that it, it could miss but it, it luckily didn't. So I ended up kill, killing this Celebi. Then he goes into his Galdeo and I stack my Tyranitar here. It takes the spike damage. I think I might have been able to survive one more. Yes, it does 43. So maybe getting a little bit of damage on this Galdeo could have been helpful for my Tracking to, to revenge kill it with QA, QA but well, it's whatever, guys. So I go here again. This. There's a lot of coin flips in this battle, so I go into my Larius here and I double back into my Terrakin knowing that he was going to most likely sack his Scarm to, to trap my Larius then with his Titer, so I go into that and I click CC 100%. He doesn't have Leftis, so he really doesn't have a way to to recover the damage I do to him. And he breaks and dies. So he goes into his Kaleo here and he uses hidden power, so that shows me that this is possibly HPI skill deal. So I go into my Darius here, and this is kind of a 50 50. Uh, I have the choice to go for the meter here and kill the teacher, and then try to risk the roll on my Darius, or I could go into, into my Landers here and win the, the game 100% unless I get a crit. But I try, I I pick to do the former. So I Draco Meteor here. I pray that I don't miss. If I miss, I lose the game. And I kill the teacher. Now, last turn. I switch into my I switch into my landers here because I didn't want to kill you to miss. I have Dragon Ball, so I 
I can kill it 100% And he shows me that it, this is HP I skill though Then I go into Malarius hoping that I would survive but sadly I don't And I lose the battle and The rule was like 40 feet, 46 to 555 yeah it's shown here but well what can I do it was definitely a really good battle I, really, I had lots of fun playing it I think I played played it really well I got every turn right and I did everything I could to win it but well in the end I couldn't good game Steve Angelo and I hope to play you again sooner and the other two games have been recorded live in the Dockerage channel, so I hope you see them later.